and welcome back to class. My name is Mrs. Papineau and I'm really happy to be back with you for our third lesson of the week on wondering. We've done a lot of practice asking questions before, during, and after we read and today I would like to show you how to do this all on your own while you're independently reading. I'd also like to show you how to write about the wonderings that you have along the way. Now, where will you do all of this writing? You have a few choices. It's really fun to keep a reading journal. And one of the ways you can do this is by printing out the pages that Seattle Public Schools has provided on their website and just putting all of them together. But I thought it would be fun to show you a couple of other ways you can do this on your own at home. So here are some examples that I think would make a great journal. So if you have an old spiral notebook, at home, you can just use a notebook like that with blank pages in it, such as this, that would work. You can also use what we call a composition notebook, which has just lined paper in it. You can use that for a journal. And my favorite ones are ones that you can make all on your own. So if you have some blank sheets of paper, you can simply put holes in the side and find a way to keep your pages together. I just use some colorful yarn, but this is a really fun way to make a journal. And then also you can just find scrap paper laying around your house. All you have to do is take your papers, line them up so they're nice and tight, and fold them together down the middle. And then you have a book of your very own. So all of these are great ways to keep track of your wonderings while you read. Plus they're just fun to do. So today during our lesson, I am going to be asking you to turn to a partner. Remember, you have lots of choices for a partner today. You can talk to someone in your home. You can talk to a pet. You can talk to a stuffed animal. You can even give me a call. Do you remember my turn and talk partner? That's right. Ren Fox is back again for today's lesson. Hi, Ren Fox. So let's get started. I love to show you the book that I'm going to read aloud to you today. Remember readers, we always start by wondering about the cover. So let's take a look. I actually showed you this book a few days ago, so maybe you'll remember. This is the book. It's called Kitchen Dance, and it is written by, oh, written and illustrated by Mari J. Manning. So that means Mari J. Manning both wrote the story, the words, and drew the beautiful pictures in this book. Now I want to show you this really closely so you can already ask some questions about this book, Kitchen Dance. All right, go ahead and turn to your partner. What do you wonder about Kitchen Dance? I'm going to ask Friend Fox. Friend Fox, what do you wonder about Kitchen Dance? Let's take a look. Friend Fox says that he wonders if these characters are all a family. Friend Fox, do you mean like if this is the mom and this is the dad and this is the brother and sister? Is that what you wonder? Hmm. Let's ask another friend. Oh, there's a first grader out there that was wondering if the people on the cover are maybe the grandma and the grandpa or maybe even an auntie and an uncle. These are some really great questions to ask before we read. Now remember readers, the other great thing about wondering is along the way we're going to check and see if we get any answers to our questions. Let's get started and see. Kitchen dance. Scrape, splash, clunk, clang. I wake up and listen. Through the walls and floor, I hear kitchen sounds. Glasses clinking, water swishing, forks clattering, then something else. A deep voice humming a tune and someone laughing. Hush. I slip out of my blankets and climb up to where Tito sleeps. Oye, do you hear? Scrape, hmm, clang. Tito listens. He rubs the sleep from his eyes. 
and we climb down the ladder. We tiptoe down the stairs, following the sounds. Clunk, hmm, shh. We creep closer and we crack open the door. Readers, are you asking some questions? Wow, this is a great place to stop. Let's ask them some questions about what's happened so far in the story. Turn to your partner, what do you wonder? I'm going to ask Ren Fox. I know, there's so much suspense here. Ren Fox wonders what's through that door. Do you agree? Did you have that wondering as well? Oh, let's ask one of our kindergarten friends. What did you wonder? Oh, you wonder what all those noises are, those sounds are that I've been reading? Me too. Wow. You know what? This is a great point of the book to stop and write in our journals about what we wonder so far. So let's get started. I decided to use this page from my printer to use for my journal today. But remember, you can use any journal page you want of your own. I wrote the title of the book at the very top, Kitchen Dance. And I drew a picture to match my wondering in this part of the book. I'm wondering what is through that door. So I drew a picture of the door and I wrote the sounds. I wrote clunk. Bang! Now I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to start with I wonder. Okay, so here we go. I wonder. I wonder what, 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 what is through the door. Hmm. Now I'm going to ask you another question. What makes you wonder that? Why do we wonder what is through the door? Hmm. Right, because we're hearing all of these loud sounds. So how could I say that? I wonder what is through the door because there are lots of sounds. Okay, let's read what we wrote. I wonder what is through the door because there are lots of sounds. Nice thinking readers. Remember, we're going to be checking along the way to see if any of our questions get answered. And I have a really good feeling they're going to today. Let's keep reading. Here's where we left off. Shh. We creep closer and crack open the door. A bright skirt flashes by. Four feet fly. My father sings a Spanish song into a wooden spoon. Como te quiero, oh how I love you. Mm -hmm. Side by side with stacked plates they glide. My father twirls my mother by one hand. Laughing she spins into his arms then out again like a yo-yo on a string. A bump of her soft hips and cabinet doors shut. Bang! One, two, pots clang into their spots in the cupboard. A third gets dried with the swipe of a cotton cloth. My mother twists and my father catches her by the waist and bends her low. There is silence for a moment. Then, around the kitchen they sweep, 
feet tapping, water dripping, sponge wiping, towel snapping. My mother's voice joins my father's, hers high and his low. Together they tango across the room with the leftover tamales. These are the tamales they have on their plate. Suddenly, Mama spies our peeking faces. Tito and I squeal and turn to run, but Papa swings the door wide and catches us. Hola. Readers, are you wondering? This is a great spot to stop and ask some questions. Hmm. What are you wondering after this part of the book? Turn to your partner. Come up with a few questions. Friend Fox, what are you wondering? What are you wondering? Oh, me too. Friend Fox is wondering if the kids are going to get in trouble for being about a bed. Woo, me too. Wow. Should we ask another friend? What are you wondering? You wonder if they're going to get to go into the kitchen with the mom and dad? Me too, me too. Now readers, in the middle of the book is a great moment to stop and jot in your journal your next wondering. So I wanna show you how to do that now in my journal. Okay, so I drew a picture of the mom spying the kids looking through the door. And I wonder if they are going to get in trouble for being up out of bed. So I'm going to use that sentence starter. I wonder. I wonder if they will get in trouble for being out of bed. Why do you wonder that? What makes us wonder that? Yeah, you're using some prior knowledge. We know that a lot of times once kids go to bed, they've got to stay there. So, hmm, I wonder this because maybe they shouldn't be out of bed like they already got tucked in. So let's add that. I wonder if they will get in trouble for being out of bed because they should be asleep. They should be sleeping. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder that. Wow. Now, let's go back up to where we wondered at the very beginning. Did we get that answered? Let's check. I wonder what is through the door because there are lots of sounds. Do we know what they're doing in there now? Yes, we do. The mom and dad are having their own dance party in the kitchen. Wow, I'm gonna put a little check mark because I found out the answer to my question. Let's read the end of the story and see what else we find out. Here's where we left off. Suddenly, Mama spies our peeking faces. Tito and I squeal and turn to run, but Papa swings the door wide and catches us. Hola. Mama holds out her hand. And I run to her. Now eight feet fly. Papa and Tito spin by. Mama lifts me up and swings me high. Papa hands us wooden spoons. Como te quiero. We all sing, oh, how I love you. We twirl around and around in a circle of family. Finally, the kitchen dance slows. Our song grows sleepy. Mama sways, feet whispering. Her hands rub my back. Papa sways too and I see Tito blink. The whole house is quiet, but for Papa's softest voice, Como te quiero. 
good night again, Papa tells us. Besitos, mi hija, Mama says, and she kisses me twice. Sweet dreams. Let me show you how to add your wonderings at the end of your story. First of all, I'm going to ask a friend, Fox, is if he's doing any additional wondering right now. I was wondering the same thing. Did the little brother go to sleep too? At the end of the book, we only saw the sister going to sleep. I'm wondering if the little boy is going to sleep too. Shall we ask another friend? I wonder that same thing too. Is mom and dad going to go to bed now as well? Or are they going to go back downstairs and start dancing again? I wonder too. All right, let's see how we can write this down at the end. Now, I drew a picture of the bunk beds because I noticed in the beginning of the story they slept in two beds, one on top of the other. So I drew the two bunk beds right there. And I'm going to start writing. I wonder if the brother is asleep too. Why do we wonder this? Do you remember? That's right, we never see a picture of him at the end. We only see a picture of the sister. So I'm going to say, because I only see the sister. Great thinking, readers. Let's check back at our middle wondering and see if we found out the answer. I wonder if they will get in trouble for being out of bed because they should be asleep. Did we find out the answer? Did they get in trouble? No. The mom and dad invited them into the dance party and they all had a family dance party together. I'm gonna check that off. We answered that wondering. Now remember readers, all of our wonderings don't always get answered in a book and that's okay because we're still doing the good work of asking questions while we read. I may never know if the little brother fell asleep or if the mom and dad went to bed, but at least I'm really doing some great thinking as I read. Great job, readers. I hope that you continue to write about your wonderings this week as you do your own independent reading. Awesome job. Now, before we end today's lesson, I thought it would be fun to go over all of our new vocabulary words from this week. Do you remember them? They were four. Let me show you the pictures so that you can remember. The first word was the word slurp. And remember, slurp means to drink something really loudly, noisily. Remember, this kid is drinking their hot chocolate noisily. So we could say he is slurping the hot cocoa. Another word we learned about is this word, stride. Remember, stride means to take big, long steps. It's helpful to have really long legs if you're striding. We also learned this great word, which is the word scrambled. Remember, scrambled means to climb in sort of a clumsy way, quickly too. And finally, we learned this word, weighted, which means remember to walk into water or anything else that's soft, like water. So for example, we saw this fox wading through snow and we saw this beautiful bird wading through the grass. Okay, so I'd like to play a game with you today and it's called, What Do You Think About? And it is going to ask you to make a mind movie in your mind when you hear your new vocabulary word. So when I say this week's word, I would like you to think about what you're visualizing happening when you hear the word and then share it with me and I'll share with you. So let's go back to our first word. Our first word of the week was the word slurp. Do 
you have a mind movie? Me too. When I hear the word slurp, I think of soup and I think of drinking something really hot and because it's hot and I'm trying to drink it really carefully, sometimes I make a lot of noise. I go when I drink the soup. I slurp the soup. I bet you can think of one too. Oh, I hear someone saying they slurp their snow cone when it starts to melt. Yeah, when the, all the yummy juice kind of gets down at the bottom and you slurp it. Yeah, that makes a loud sound, doesn't it? Thanks for those examples. Okay, let's try the next one. What do you see in your mind when you hear the word stride? What I see in my mind is when someone is late to catching the bus and they have to take big long steps to make sure that they get there before the bus takes off. Can you think of a time when someone might stride? Nicely done. Right. Sometimes you might have been at the park and you've seen a mom or a dad or a babysitter stride toward maybe a kid that they're taking care of to keep them safe. Maybe they're getting close to doing something dangerous. So someone is trying to move really quickly. They take big, long steps to get to them. Let's try our next word. This is the word scrambled. What do you see when you hear this word scrambled? Yes, this morning I saw a squirrel scramble. I saw a squirrel scramble up a tree. This word fits that perfectly because he was climbing kind of crazily up the tree, but it was quick. Can you think of something that you think of when you hear the word scrambled? Hmm. I hear some of you saying sometimes when you're racing a friend and you're trying to get to the top of the jungle gym first, you scramble, right? You go really quickly, but kind of like, crazily because it doesn't matter how you're getting there. You just want to get there first. Great example. Finally, what image do you get in your mind when you hear the word weighted? Yeah, me too. It's hard to not think about the ocean when you see this picture, right? I'm thinking about when I go into the water, how I always wade first because I don't like the water to be too cold. So I wade first to make sure it's not too cold. Is there another example of weighted you can think of? Oh, great example. That one time the ball went over the fence and you had to wade through the grass to find it. Yes, I completely agree. What a great mind movie for weighted. Awesome job. Well, readers, it has been such a fun week working with you on the skill of wondering. I know that you will continue to practice this skill during your independent reading time, and I'm so proud of all of your hard work, and I know your teachers are too. Thanks for so much for learning with me this week, and stay well.